descending. We all love it, but it can feel a little daunting at times. Maybe if you're recovering from a crash or you haven't had those longer downhills to really hone your skills. So in this video, we thought we'd list a few things you may want to avoid when the road heads downhill. Let's do it. One descending mistake is braking really hard when you're in corners. You want to avoid doing this because doing so, it's harder to keep you alive and push you wide. Ugh. Doing this is not only dangerous because it pushes you out into oncoming traffic and pushes you wide of your original line, but it's also going to interrupt your flow, make it much harder to get down longer descents when you're doing that on every single hairpin. Instead, you want to break before the corner, check your speed, jam your outside foot into that pedal, tuck in, don't break, and get round the corner without too many drugs. One big old descending mistake is whipping down those hills with your brakes set up the wrong way. Maybe you've gone somewhere different, you've rented a bike, you're borrowing a bike, or you've just got your brand new Steve for the first time, you've headed off, and then you realise when it's too late going down that climb that you brace up the wrong way. And it is a hard thing to wrap your head around at 60 kilometres an hour. So definitely check it out before. Make sure your bike is set up in the way you're used to riding because it really does mess with your head when those brakes are switched. For me, it is right brake front. I get it, it can feel quite daunting descending fast, especially if you may be recovering from a crash. And I can remember having that experience myself. You're getting back into it, you find it really hard to get into that descent and let the bike flow properly. You're kind of tensing up, you're nervous, and it is hard to relax. If you can relate to this, then my advice would be to try and relax, but build your confidence up gradually. On those longer stretches of road, you can afford to relax and increase your top speed without constantly being on the brakes. That will allow you to stop that fatigue setting in and also flow down those descents a bit better. I would say you start to break a little earlier than needed when you're coming into hairpins or corners, so you're taking those bends with a slower speed than necessary, and you can practice getting your body in the right position, getting around those curves properly without using the brakes, and as your confidence increases, then you can then afford yourself to break that bit later and later as you're building up the experience necessary. Also, if you're getting nervous on those longer stretches of road where your speed really does tend to rise and you reach quite high terminal velocity, then I'd say instead of holding on the brakes all the time, try and keep a less aerodynamic position, so maybe go on the hoods, keeping a firm grip, but also trying to relax that upper body, using your body almost like a wind brake rather than relying on your brakes to slow your speed. Using a slightly less aerodynamic position like this will allow you to lower that top speed or terminal velocity without constantly having to be on the brakes to cut that speed. And I think that allows you to stay that bit more relaxed on the descents, lowering that fatigue and tension in your upper body, making for a more enjoyable experience all round. One more common mistake, especially if you're descending in a group or maybe a bit more of a false flat, is not pedaling if you're at the front of that group. It makes it really hard for those behind you. They're getting that draft effect and they're always having to check the brakes. So if you can pedal a bit, keep a bit of power on the pedals, it will make for a more relaxing descent for you and for those around you because they're not always trying to overtake you, check the brakes and wonder why we're not going so fast. There's definitely an advantage to being able to descend a little bit faster. So if you are building your confidence up and you're feeling like you can progress a bit more, then I would say try and get low on those descents, try and increase that speed safely, because it will help you out in the long run. If you're on a mountainous route, for example, you really want to try and get down those climbs quickly and start your effort on the next climb. The more you hang around on those descents, it's more time to get cold, to let your muscles get cold. It takes more effort to get going again when the road heads uphill. So if you can descend confidently, get down fast, start climbing again, it'll really prove advantageous. 
So there we go, a few mistakes you might want to avoid when the road goes downhill. Let me know in the comments though what sort of mistakes you've made on your bike whilst descending and how you've learned to avoid this. And if you found this video useful, please give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget, with downhills, come uphills. Thanks for watching everyone.